Hello, and welcome to Marriage Unchained, the art of one flesh, where saving marriages, saving families, and saving souls is the flavor of the day. Now, let's join our host and author of Marriage Unchained, Catholic Alpha Radical, Jerry Jacobs Jr. Hello, I'm Jerry. Welcome to Episode 6. Today's focus is Catholic Beliefs on Marriage, Wife Tells All, Part 2, and the current scandal in the Catholic Church, Christ Church. So sit back, relax, take a chill pill, and get ready to rock. But don't duck. Can you feel it? Catholic Alpha Radical, coming at you now. Hello, and welcome to Catholic Alpha Radical, where my main mission is to keep you out of divorce court and where marriage unchained the art of one flesh divorce combat coaching is the flavor of the day while helping men understand marriage and courting not dating in the catholic faith why because dating is for sex and courting is for marriage this is episode six bam so let's do this the quote of the day and we always start out with our quote because we these are help they are, these are very inspiring and help us to get into what we're going to get in today so quote how great is the dignity of chaste wedlock Venerable brethren may be judged best from this that Christ our Lord, Son of Eternal Father, having assumed the nature of fallen man, not only with his loving desire of compassing the redemption of our race, ordained it in a special manner as the principle and foundation of domestic society, and therefore of all human intercourse but also raised it to the rank of a truly and great sacrament of the new law, restored it to the original purity of its divine institution, and accordingly entrusted all its discipline and care to his spouse, the church, end quote. Pope Pius XI, Casti Canubi, 1930, Papal Encyclical on Christian Marriage. So here we are, Catholic Alpha's Radical Rant of the Day. Title, The Cowardice of Men, The Top 21 Reasons Men Have Caused the 2018 Scandal in the Catholic Church and Why We're Not Going to Take It Anymore. And before I start, this will be a 21-episode series, one per show. Um, also understand that the infiltration of the Catholic Church with homosexuality and radical feminism, plus the watering down of the faith and the stripping away of the Latin mass was planned in order to destroy the morality of those within the church, priest and laity, and it's not the teaching of the Catholic Church. And why was this done? Why? to destroy the American family, to destroy our morality, and destroy American patriotism in order that we become susceptible to communism and its ideas. And that's very important that we understand that. The scandal that's going on right now in the church today with child abuse, with the watering down of the faith, with um, changing things from, you know, the, in, from Vatican II, throwing away statues, changing the mass, all of this was planned. Why? In order for communism to be infiltrated into America. But like I said in episode two, 
in the 1920s and 30s, America was strong. We stood strong. Family, morality, and patriotism made it very hard for uh, the communists to um, take us down. And like I said, if you want more of that, you want to listen to episode two, which explains um, the whole thing. Many people also want to bash or worse, leave the Catholic faith because of the current scandal. And I will say this is pure ignorance. That's exactly what the evil one wants us to do. The church has been infiltrated by evil because we, the people, the laity have stopped praying. And that's just the bottom line on that. And until we again start teaching the faith to our children and start spreading the gospel and more importantly, praying, because with prayer, we get power and grace from God. He gives us he gives us these things so that we are able to um, so that we have the fortitude and the perseverance to, to spread his word and to help save souls through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if we leave the church, which is Christ Church, the Catholic Church, if we leave the church, we are no better than, than, than a Protestant or an atheist or anyone else who has who, who claim they have faith. Um, I know atheists don't have faith. They have their own faith, which is basically selfishness. But um, but we have to understand that we there's no way that we can leave Christ because then we're relying on ourselves and we're showing that we don't have faith. Um, our faith is weak. You stay and deal with the cross. We've created this cross. God didn't create it. So now we have to fix it. Okay. And with his power, we can do that. Um, we must fight within the church. Also, we must understand that there are many Judases in the church and Judas portrayed Christ. And he didn't ask for forgiveness. He committed suicide. So we have to understand, are we going to be like that? Are we going to abandon Christ too? That's a great question. You have to fight within the church if you want to change the church. You can't go and join another church, get outside the Catholic faith, um, and go somewhere and think you're going to change the church in that and change how things are done. Because no matter how you look at it, the Catholic faith is 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 the first church. And what happens inside that begins, whether it's good or bad, trickles down to other so-called re, um, relig Christian religions. Okay. Um, and so basically what I'm saying is you can't change the church outside the church. It is very important that men, women, we understand that and we pass that on to our children and in our environment. So let's get started with number six of the top 21 reasons that men are responsible for the 2018 scandal in the Catholic Church. But let's first review the first five. In episode one, the first radical rant ever was the refusal to accept our role as men. Number two was we allowed the men in the Catholic Church, popes, cardinals, bishops, priests, and deacons to water down, dilute the teachings of the Catholic Church and Christ's teachings. Number three was they, men, didn't fight for Christ during Vatican II. And if you remember, Vatican II went, was when all basically hell broke loose and we the people started changing things, started changing the mass, getting rid of relics, getting rid of 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 um of the holy family and statues and and things that that showed reverence inside the church. They changed the altar, they put Christ in a corner or a little room or in the basement, you know, just crazy stuff like that. Um number four was an unwilling to sacrifice for Christ. Number five, they have nothing, men, they have nothing that they are willing to die for. And so before each number, each number, I will read a quote directly from the document containing Cardinal Carlo Maria Vigano's testimonial. And why am I doing this? 
is so that you could understand the gravity of the situation of what's going on in the church and to speak out against it in your environment, which is what is your environment? It's your marriage. It's your family. It's your society. It's work. And it's been, what, three, four, five weeks since this broke. And people, you would think it would be going that that things would be getting worse. I mean, that the the story would start to go away. And that's what people that the evil ones in the church are hoping. They're hoping that this goes away and dies down, but it's not. It's not going to die down, okay? Because we understand that the more we stop talking about it, the more we let things go by, it's not going to go away. We have to clean this up, okay? We have to start influencing our environment and answering questions and understanding our faith so that we can, so that we, can can change things back to the way God would have it. Realize, um, also, um, I will place the link to this full, to Cardinal Vigano's um, first testimonial in the show notes. So, quote, this is Cardinal McCarrick, um, Cardinal McCarrick's testimony as he sees it, um, and he, uh, with Cardinal McCarrick um, and how um, this, <laughs> I, I just don't even, I mean, it's every time I read this and listen to this and hear people talk about it, it just hurts me deep because I know that over the years and decades, we really could have stopped this, but what, what we didn't, we crossed our arms, sat in the pews and we didn't do anything. Um, so here we go. Number six, see quote, but finally I learned with certainty through Cardinal Giovanni Battista, then prefect of the congregation for bishops, that Richard Sipes courageous and meritorious statement had had the desired result. Pope Benedict had imposed on Cardinal McCarrick sanctions similar to those now imposed on him by Pope Francis. The Cardinal was to leave the seminary where he was living. He was forbidden to celebrate mass in public, to participate in public meetings, to give lectures, to travel with the obligation of dedicating himself to a life of prayer and penance. I do not know when Pope Benedict took these measures against McCarrick, whether in 2009 or 2010, because in the meantime, I had been transferred to the governorate of Vatican City State, just as I do not know who was responsible for this incredible delay. I certainly do not believe it was Pope Benedict, who as Cardinal had repeatedly denounced the corruption present in the church, and in the first months of his pontificate had already taken a firm stand against their admission into seminary of young men with deep homosexual tendencies. I believe it was due to the Pope's first collaborator at the time, Cardinal Tarcisio Bertone, who notoriously favored promoting homosexuals into positions of re responsibility and was accused, or was accustomed to managing the information he thought appropriate to convey to the Pope, end quote. Wow. So basically what that's saying is <laughs> Pope Francis knew and, but especially uh, Pope Benedict tried to stop him and tried to do the right thing. But then his advisors went behind his back basically and, and, didn't do things the correct way. And that's what I've been talking about over these last five or six episodes is that we can, we can, we can uh, demean and dog out and, and, you know, speak out on the cover up of bishops and priests and priests that are attacking boys and young men um, who are living to the word of Christ we can we can tack them out, but we also got to realize there are good men in the priesthood, in as bishops and cardinals, 
although there are very few that have been fighting this for decades that understand what's going on. But as I've said before, at every turn, they are thwarted because it wasn't enough of them because the lady didn't back them up. The men and the lady didn't back them up. We we didn't get behind them either because of ignorance, because of laziness or whatever it is. So um, realize, also realize that what I'm going to do, um, these 20 top 21 reasons are not in any order. And because I realize that it's just not one thing or one reason or one act. What it is, is many people, these these 21 things, they had just built on top of each other over time. And so the number six reason men have caused the 2018 scandal in the Catholic Church is we now raise soft and selfish boys a.k.a. wusses. <laughs> All right, go ahead, get on me, but I don't care because it's the truth. Look, here's the problem. Weak men raise weak boys. And I don't mean weak as in, you know, physical strength. I mean weak as, men, as in mentality, as in intellect, as in spiritually. Too many parents today are lazy and we give in to the every whim of our children Men, as men, we allow our we allow the mothers and our wives to pamper the boys way too much. Why? Because we are lazy and we don't want to destroy the so-called peace in our home. But you have to remember, when you don't discipline children, especially boys, things just get chaotic because boys push it, push it, and push it. If you don't stop them, they go further and further. A mother's job, that's why you need a mother and a father in the home, because a mother's job is to nurture. Now, whether she, her definition of what nurturing is can go too far, but that doesn't matter. But that's when the husband comes in. Remember, feminism, mac, uh, femininity and masculin masculinity. These two things create a perfect being, one flesh. So when one side goes too far in the nurturing, which is the mom, then the dad comes in and what he does with, with logic and discipline is set things back on track and get the boy back on track. Um, and this is diabolical as boys never learn to take responsibility of men. If we don't discipline boys and, and be hard on them and teach them how to be tough mentally physically and spiritually they become weak and soft and they be, they basically remain infants in a man's body and we've all seen them we've all seen grown men big two three hundred pound men and they have not grown up they still whine and bitch and moan like a little infant and we think well that's them no it is them but it's also that they weren't raised in a tough environment without discipline because in, in my household, when my boys start whining, cut it off. I don't want to hear that stuff because that's not what men do. We grow up. We, we take on our responsibility. We take our sufferings. We don't, you know, bitch about it. And if we got someone you want to bitch to, what you do is you talk to God and you talk to your wife. That's what you do. But even then, with your wife, you don't continuously do it. But that's what your wife's for. She's your helpmate. That's why when you're not married, you don't have anybody to go talk to and deal and help you deal with the stuff. Okay? And basically, this is what Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen contends, that men are made through suffering and responsibility. And this is completely true. Because without pain... We never grow in holiness or understand that there is a God and more importantly, that we aren't God. And when we don't rely on God or or when we don't go through enough pain and suffering, what happens is we think that we're invincible. And so that's why we have illness. That's how, why we get old. That's why bad things happen in our lives, because God's grace is up to this point. 
If you've never, as a man, had anything go bad in your life, that's because of the grace of God. That's for a reason. But I guarantee you have had something go bad, okay? Without responsibility, we never learn how to lead and serve others, but only to rely on ourselves. And that's what atheists are. They completely rely on themselves. They think that it's just them and their kids grow up screwed up. If you're a Christian, it's hard enough to get the kids right with, with God because of our own deficiencies as, as, as human persons. But when you, you, don't, you don't even have any grace from God, you rely on yourself to get your kids right and your kids ain't going to be right. OK. Uh, again, believing ultimately that we are responsible for everything good that happens in our lives, but are not responsible for everything bad that happens in our lives, a.k.a. we are God. And that's how people think these days. We think that everything that happens good in our lives is we did it. Everything bad happens in our lives. It's someone else's fault. It's not our fault. And that is a road for tragedy. And that is on the road to tragedy. Okay. Um, without pain. And again, without pain and responsibility, we never progress. We, we remain focused completely on ourselves. And throughout our lives, if we do not understand as men that we have a creator, what happens to we turn in on ourselves, we think we are it. We become completely self-absorbed. And sure, there, there may be good times or bad times that we don't feel like this. But for the most part, on a day to day basis, this is how we are. Now, consciously, we don't think like that. But. But it's an unconscious act. And until we get then what happens, we get sick. Uh, our wife leaves us. Our girlfriend dumps us. Um, our mother dies or something like that. Then we start to reflect on our own lives. And most people today, what do they do? Reflect for about 10 minutes and then they move on and go, oh, well, okay. Um, and also, I want to say that when we completely focused are completely focused on ourselves, we we act like we are God and other people are basically pawns in our self-made chess boards. Am I lying? Think about it. When we're selfish, which is what's going on in the Catholic Church right now, men are, are not standing up. So when they're not standing up, the lady, the, the, which is the, the congregation, the, the body of Christ, the men and women, what they start to do is they start to do what the leadership does because they, we follow them. And so if they don't man up, be great leaders, uh, abide in Christ, do his will, be obedient, show reverence, then what happens is men and women, we start to do what they do. This is why you have the crushing of masculinity today. This is why you have boys that are soft and weak mentally and physically and, and spiritually, but mainly mentally and spiritually. OK, um, am I lying? Well, let's look. You say I'm lying. You saying, Jerry, you know what you're talking about. Well, let's look and see. OK, basically every man, every I'm sorry, not every man, but every young boy, every I mean, every boy, every uh, teenager, a, mo a lot of not everyone, but a good percentage of uh, boys, uh, teenagers and young men. And I mean, young men under, say, 30. 30 and below. OK, even you got a lot other than that. But we're talking about, you know, our we're talking about our um, our failure as men to lead these boys correctly. OK, so let's look. Basically, every boy, teen or young man you see on the outside exudes weakness and softness. If you just look at young boys today, look at their posture, look at how they carry themselves, look at, you know, Sure, not all boys are like that, but 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 they are a lot of boys. I mean, they're miserable. I mean, they have no self confidence. They uh, they they bow down. They they're they're susceptible to so many different outside means. One day they're dressed in all black. The other day they're dressed in all pink. Another day they're dressed in whatever. Um, they have their they have earrings. 
they have, you know, earrings on, skinny jeans. You got skinny jeans on, tight jeans on. You're a man and you walking around looking like some girl somewhere. Um, long hair. Long hair is a feminine quality. Okay. And we have to understand that boys do what other would do what the men do. So if if men are walking around with tattoos and earrings in their ear, big ear diamond buds, uh, earbuds in their ears, um, they wear in pink. They wear soft colors. Um, they they uh, they had tattoos all over their bodies. They have no chest hair. They have soft half voices, nose piercings, colored hair such as blue, red, yellow. They wear makeup. I mean, some spend hours in the mirror and some haven't even haven't even seen the mirror in decades and et cetera. And it goes on and on when young boys see their examples of other men look like this and doing these things. What do they do? They exude it. And then what do we want to do? We want to dog the little boy out. And that's not fair. Our job through God is God made man and woman and is a man's job. I don't care if you want to be gay. I don't care if you want to be a heterosexual. Whatever you are, you still have to exude the best example of a man out in public, out in the environment. Why? Because other little boys are looking up to you. And no matter what you want to do behind closed doors, that has nothing like me. I'm a, I'm a man. I'm a heterosexual man. But you know what? All the time, sometimes I want to bitch and moan. Sometimes I want to be out in public and just look and act like how I want to act. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be, uh, try to be the best example of a man. But what do I, but, but I do. I try my best anyway. And this is why, because we are, we can't, I can't afford to not show the best masculinity that I can the way God is asking me to do. Why? Because I'm leaving the little ones to hell, to damnation. And and not just that, their lives, they have a whole life ahead of them. And I, it's pressure. I know it's pressure as a man. It's pressure that we have to do this. But this is what we're called to do as men, to be leaders and great examples through character, virtue, and holiness to other young boys. Why? So that they grow and be, be be virtuous and holy and raise holy children and 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 be the best example of a man that they can be. Okay, um, they refuse to portray what God has created them to be, and and this is the complete problem with many of the men leading our church. They weren't raised as true men. They didn't have enough pain and responsibility growing up. Farm work, hunting, broken bones, tough and excruciating labor. Like my son Solomon, um, last year in football, he didn't even get hit. He tore his ACL. He went through a whole six, eight months of rehab. So now this year as a freshman, he goes through nine uh, nine, uh, eight games. And in the ninth game, he gets the interception, catches the ball, intercepts the ball for his third game in a row, and he just trips on his own foot, falls, and it hurts his knee again. Now, that is toughness, and that is a warrior. And this is where the men in the Catholic faith don't understand. Even though that we have pain and we have suffering, we offer that suffering up to God so that he can distribute that grace to others. And but what do we do? We're scared to let our boys do anything. I am so hurt that my son is hurt again. I am. But I understand that this is what God is giving him. It's, if he offers that up for God, then what will happen is. This is a trial that God's allowed. It must be something for his soul. It must be something he needs and his parents need for him, for him to grow in holiness, for us to help him, you know. And also it might be saying, hey, Solomon, maybe it's football or any sport is you're not a sportsman. Okay. Because if, if he was playing football, but he didn't get hurt, I mean he didn't get hit. Nobody touched him. So that could have happened in any sport, basketball, tennis, golf. It could have happened in anything. You know, uh, 
it's it's just a weird it was just a weird fluke but we'll see so remember farm work broken bones tough and excruciating labor it builds mental toughness it builds character interior character so god so this is what god is giving you it's is is it when you go through tough times and toughness and god allows this in your life it's a grace it's so that you can get through this and then once you come out you're tough you're tougher and you can deal with things more important the teachings of christ are absent which encourages a weak mind and intellect which makes them which makes them susceptible to lies instead of truth Look at people today. You can't, especially men. Well, I'm going to say men and women, but especially men. They refuse the truth at every turn. At every turn, they refuse the truth. It's ridiculous. You can't speak to like these people that don't like Trump. And if you like Trump or don't like Trump, that's not the point. The point of it is, it's all about emotion. You know, causing a riot, trying to break down doors and you know, trying to the, the Supreme Court justice that, that just got um, nominated. You know, they tried to, to you know, to to sk- to slander the man, his wife, his children just have no cooth, no class, no respect, no holiness. And it's, it's terrible. You know, it's and that's what's what's the problem is. People, men these days can't accept the truth. If you tell them something, they don't agree with it. They get pissed off and want to fight. Or not, well, they ain't going to fight because they're not too, they're, you know, ain't nobody fighting nobody because they they cowards. But they do get upset, you know, like this one dude, this woman, they're in a, in a, in a, in a crowd and the woman is pro-life and this liberal dude who's pro-choice, he took his hand and knocked her out and hit her. Now, what is a man, you a man, are you hitting a woman like that? Because you a coward. You know, you didn't like what she said, so you hit her. But you ain't going to hit a man like that. Anyway, that's the problem. Our boys, we that's why we have to raise our boys, because they need restraint. And this is what God and Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, instill in young men when their minds are formed correctly. I've said it, and I will keep saying it. Until the men of this nation step up and claim their role as true man, Nothing will change. As a matter of fact, it will only get worse. So what do you think? Send your questions or comments to RadicalQuestions at CatholicAlpha.com. Again, send your questions or comments to Catholic Alpha. I'm sorry, to RadicalQuestions at CatholicAlpha.com. Send some feedback. Bam. So please remember to share this podcast with someone needing help in their marriage or relationship. Rate this podcast if listening on iTunes. Subscribe to this podcast if listening on CatholicAlpha.com to get new episodes in your email today. Welcome to our interview segment. In episode five, I began my two-part interview with my wife and periodic co-host, Mary Kathleen. (laughs) We speak on many topics, including her view on masculinity, the 2018 scandal in the Catholic Church, and how feminism is corrupting women and girls in our society. She is the mother of our five children, Lauren, Max, Marcus, Jericho, and Solomon, She's a lover of Christ Church, the Catholic Church. She is the co-facilitator of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary Parish in Indianapolis uh, Adult Faith Formation Ministry, co-organizer of Holy Rosary's Yearly Parish Mission, co-organizer of Holy Rosary's Men's and Women's Conferences, organizer of the Parish's Welcome Committee. So here is part two of our interview together. 
Catholic Beliefs on Marriage, Wife Tells All, Part 2. Okay, in what ways are women responsible for the fall of marriage and the family? Listening to the serpent, listening, 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 listening to that voice that says, you can have it all. You don't have to listen to him. Listen to friends that don't, they're not, oh man, the biggest thing, did you say women or wives? What are we talking about? Women. It doesn't matter women, I, I'm well, being women in general. Well, the thing is, when, when, I was, when I was a single mom, all my friends are single moms, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a single mom. I want to be a married mom. Kind of put the cart before the horse. But anyway. I want well, tell them, tell them your thing on the single mom thing. I know you're going to be like, now what? I know. It's like, uh, uh, I don't know exactly. Because single mom isn't really single. Oh, what did you say? Oh, there's divorce. If you're divorced, you're not a single mom. You're a divorced mom. Yeah. If you are a widow, you're not a single mom. You're a widowed mom. Now, if you did like I did, which is really dumb, is to get pregnant by a guy that you're not married to, mm -hmm. um, you're a single mom. And that's what I was. I was a single mom. But then, here's my thing. And they're going to get, get mad at me say, y'all, he's too harsh, but I don't even care because it's time for truth. <laughs> truth is why your butt ain't it. The truth is why your butt's where you're at. Look. And silence. Single. Where if, 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 listen. I'm a, you know, I don't feel sorry for single mothers. You get what you create. Women, you get what you create and you had them kids. You let that man get in you. You let that man have sex with you. You did it. And then, okay, now if you did it once and you have a baby, you would think, okay, I learned my lesson. No, you didn't learn your lesson. What do you do? You do it again. Well, you and then you. Well, birth control don't work. It, see, it only works for the career woman who who's married. See, here's what God does, right? It works for the career woman who's married, right? Out, yeah. That thinks, I'm going to be a politician. I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to go be a, a welder. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I'm going to put having kids off. I'm married, but I'm going to put having kids off to where I want to have kids. Guess what happens? Then your little butt. You're 40, you're 30 years old, 35 years old. You didn't spend what you can start. You should have, you can start, you start getting married. You should be married at 18. <laughs> so you wait 12, 15, you wait 18, 17 years to size. You say you're 35 and you think you're going to want to start having kids now, which really most of the, most of you out there, let's tell the truth. Most of you get pregnant. You really don't want to. It just happens because your birth control quits or something. And, And so what happens is you decide, you and your little hubby decide, well, we're going to have kids now. And you can't have kids. That's what God does to you. He pulls back his grace. He pulls back his grace because you're going to be willful and you're not going to let God decide how many kids you have. And so what happens is you 35 can't have kids. You 40, you can't have kids. You 45, you can't have kids. So now you look up and it's just you and your husband and you don't have one flesh. You don't have one flesh. And one flesh is the children. That's how you become one flesh. You, your husband, and your kids. Because you love each other and you you are you are blessed by God to be able to participate in creation. Yeah. He gives you that blessing to create to participate in creation and you abuse it because you put your career above God, your husband, your marriage, and your children what children you don't have. And you think, that, you know, I'm taking contraception. I'm being responsible. You listen to like my like Mary said, you listen to the devil, dude. You know, women, I, I love you, but I'm going to tell you the truth. You get mad at me all you want, but single mothers, you know, and then when you're a single mother, God works the opposite way. Right. So you, you want a kid when you married after 50 years, you want a kid after 50 years. You think you're 45 and you can still conceive a kid. Oh, boy, are you in a dream world? Right. So what God does on the in the on the opposite end is okay. I'm a single. I'm single, and I'm having sex with all these dudes. And when I say all these dudes, I mean more than one. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean like you know. 
I don't mean one. I mean, I'll give you the one because, you know, everybody makes a mistake. But let's be real. God then pulls his grace away because why? God is trying to teach you. God's trying to teach you that you need him and that he's your creator and he knows what's best for you. So what do you do? You have sex with all these dudes and then you have all these kids. Because your birth control stops working for a reason. It ain't because it's bad luck. It's because God's pulling back the grace on you. Just be real about it. You have to understand grace. You have to understand evil, how it works. You have to understand collateral damage of evil. If you don't understand those three things, man, you're going to be screwed. Mm-hmm. You are. I was. I know, babe. You be uh, you be telling me. I, I, I don't feel. I didn't feel sorry for you neither. <laughs> You're true. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, ladies. If you li- a woman listen to this, listen. The reason I say these kind of things because it's time for the truth. What you need to do, because you got to teach your daughters. Yeah. You got to start teaching your daughters how to be ladies, how to be classy, how to be virtuous and holy. Because if you don't, nobody k- loves them like you do. Mm-hmm. And if the daddy ain't around or your husband left you or whatever, you just stuck out there on your own. Mm-hmm. So you really can't afford to mess up. Now you got two jobs. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay. So. All right, so how have the how have the feminazis harmed the state of femininity? Um, the the feminazis harm the state of femininity. Well, it's a lie because feminism hurts. Women. Oh, that's so great! It's a lie. I know it hurts women. It hurts women to not know. Well, it hurts women to not understand that um, their husband is their protect is their protector and their provider. And that they are the the nurturers and the lovers and the heart of the home. And oh boy, don't get me hot and bothered over here, no. baby. Oh Lord. <laughs> okay, maybe I was train of thought. <laughs> I mean, I've worked, I do work, um, but you know the thing about women working, I mean we complain about not making the same as Okay, women. back up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A little. Okay. Let's just get it straight. Don't lie to the people. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard. It is hard to get up in the morning to make breakfast for everybody. To well, <sighs> women don't make breakfast. Okay. So it's hard to get up in the morning. Put your makeup on. Uh, women don't wear makeup. Okay. It's hard to get up. Get ready to go. Get the kids ready to go. And then you got to go. And then you got to drop them off. And then you get to go to work. And then you get to pick them up. And then you get to go to the store. And then you get to clean the house. And then you get to cook the dinner. And then you get to put everything away. And then you get to pray the night prayers, which is the best part. And then you get to put everybody to bed. And then you get to go to bed. And then you get to get up and do it all over again. No. And then your husband says... I want to make love. And you look at him like he's crazy as hell. I'm tired. <laughs> I catch you Saturday. <laughs> well, not only that, we take more time off work. That's why we don't make the same amount as men. I mean, I had a, little, I had a part-time job. I got sick. I stayed home. There was a lady that worked in the office with me. Kids get sick. You get sick. You stay home when men get sick. Not only do they not go to the doctor, but they continue to go to work and spread their germs amongst everyone. Mm-hmm. But um, if the kids get sick, men don't take off work. Mm-mm. No, mm-hmm. we can't do that. No, no, no. no. But we've been, we've been sold a bill of goods. A bill of goods. You, you sing all the... No, <laughs> this is the only time, this is the first time I've been singing. They don't really want to hear my voice. You have a good voice. Mm. Your voice. Mm. So... <laughs> We ain't going to get into the hair thing, but I'm going to do a whole podcast on the hair thing. Women cutting their hair, looking like a man. Man, you see women walking down the street, and you can't tell who the man or the woman is walking together. And the boys just went to Dollar General, right? Mm-hmm. And um, there was a, a really tall, I mean, these are teenagers, so they, they looked about 12 or 13. 
a really tall black girl. And I thought it was a short, fat white boy. Well, my son saw me and goes, huh, look at that. And I'm like, well, I thought it was unusual for a tall 13 year old black girl to be holding a short, fat 13 year old white boy's hand. Mm-hmm. I thought that was an unusual thing to see. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Jericho said, boy, they look odd. And so I said, that's because it's two girls. And we all went, what? Uh, <laughs> okay. Here's the deal. Here's the thing about lesbians. First of all, lesbians ain't doing nothing. That's why you never hear Jerry talk about lesbians. You always hear Jerry talk about homosexual men. Why? Because ain't nothing getting stuck nowhere. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Ain't nothing getting stuck nowhere. Women are just playing. They playing around. And you can get mad at me if you want, but this is God talking. That's how he set it up. Whatever, dude. (laughs) No, sometimes you got to have the truth. And this is the point. Women are playing around. They playing around. They playing. And and then then here's the thing. One of them takes on. See, this is how you know that women and lesbian, the lesbian thing is total of total fraud. One of them plays the masculine role and one of them plays the feminine role. Which means it, it doesn't even make logical sense. If you a woman and you are the feminine part one in the relationship, and you so and you and your other one is a is a man is a woman playing a man's role. To me, you like men. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you would think if a woman. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a lesbian, but you would think if you're a woman. And you're you ain't a lesbian, baby. <laughs> 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 but um, that, that that's confusing to me. I don't need to know anything about it. But if you're, I would think my brain says, well, if you're a woman, you're attracted to women. You'll be with a woman. Exactly. A woman there with woman. two feminine women. Yeah. yeah because if you look at a lesbian couple, one is always looks like a butch, mm-hmm. which in the hood, a butch. If you don't know. <laughs> That's right. If you a but if you a butch, what is that's the one that's the male that looks like the acts like the male who looks like a male that wears the man the baggy jeans, or looks like them plays the male role. He's she's the masculine one in the relationship, the one that's you know running things. And that's another thing. God set it up the natural law for a reason, and then they actually act out the natural law. Of, of of what I mean is the man and the woman. Right. You know, and I'm sorry, not the natural law, the natural order. Natural they order. the natural order. They actually acted out that there's the, the masculine one and the feminine one. I know. And that was what was also unusual about seeing these teenagers, is because I think it was the first time I had ever well, it's the first time I seen little girls that young act like that. I think. I don't know. I'm I'm old. But it was also the first time I had seen a black girl in the feminine Role, because she was wearing a sundress, believe it or not. And then the, the the little white girl was wearing a baggy shirt and baggy shorts. And that was another point Solomon made. You don't see girls running around in baggy clothes unless they're trying to be a boy. Now, how old is Solomon? 14. Four, this is a 14-year-old talking. Come on now. <laughs> mm. Solomon's wise. Mm. He had to school the rest of his dummies in the car, his 15-year-old brother and his 15-year-old friend. <laughs> they didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> But look, I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm the bad one in the relationship. I'm the one that points. I'm a straight up person. This is why if you listen to my podcast, you listen because you want to hear what's up. I'm telling you what's up. I give you things to think about. I don't make, you know, I make a lot of states, but I also ask a lot of questions. And it's important that you start looking at society in a different way. If you are a Catholic and you love Christ, or even if you're a Protestant and you love Christ, you have to... Or you, you're just a person who loves Christ. Nah, yeah. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Hold up. Uh-oh. <laughs> we're talking about a person. I just told you the two categories. Only two categories. Okay. And, you know, if you love Christ, right, you have to start with drawing, taking control of society. And looking at what's going on and being observant, you got to stop being the one pulling back. You got to start speaking up. And I'm not really talking about women. I'm talking about men, because 
let's be real. Men don't really listen to women like that. Women, when a woman talks, I don't care if she's a president of the United States. When a woman talks, men hear. Except when I talk. No, baby, when you talk, it's totally different. <laughs> <laughs> so, l- believe me, women think, and you, if you have power, you think the man listens to you. He really don't. I don't care if he's one of those wussy dudes that you, that's your secretary. He, When you talk, he hears. That's what he hears. He hears noise. More like Charlie Brown's teacher. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, wah, 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 wah. Now he might do what you say, but he it's on his terms, you know. But anyway, that's a whole other podcast. So next question: You are an advocate. I'm talking to my baby, my beloved. You are an advocate and champion of pro life, which has gotten our car scratched up and defiled on occasion. How has abortion harmed women in the family? Oh, now, goodness. I'm not saying take an hour for this. Well, <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a. That's Give me the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> <laughs> well, to kill your baby, I mean, that is a hardening of a heart that is beyond measure. Um, I think one of the mistakes the pro life movement makes is some of the old timers still say, oh, they say it's a blob of tissue. No, 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 no. Women today know it's a baby. They know they're killing their baby. And that's what they're going to do because they were told that's the best thing to do is to kill the baby. If you don't have a baby, you don't have a family. I mean. Right. Hold up. No, you just didn't say that. What's wrong with not baby, no family? All the time I would tell you. No, I didn't say what you think I said. Okay. I ain't going to go there then. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, the baby will have a, okay. And, and, and I might have come around to your way of thinking. No, the angels are singing. God has sent down the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. <laughs> no. But to, to to be a murderer of your own. Mm-hmm. That is diabolical. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I don't know what more to say. I'm sorry. I I have to think a little more. Even though it's no, no. a pro life meeting. Well, tell awesome. tell me one of the st- I, I I know what to, to drive it home. Tell me one of the stories where our car got scratched. Like I know, like one time I had Reagan. My Reagan. What was my Reagan sign? Oh, your your Reagan um your Reagan uh thing said. Oh shoot. Can't think of it. But anyway, it was about was it about abortion? Yeah, it was about abortion. Yeah, it was that it was I had a Reagan magnetic sign on my car, and I don't put look, okay, y'all. When I I don't put anything on my cars. I don't put any kind of stickers, any kind of signs or nothing. I don't even put our company sign on there and stuff. Because I don't want to mess my car up. I definitely don't put stickers, bumper stickers that stick on there. Because it messes your car up, right? So one of the things I did, I saw this Reagan abortion sign and it really hit home to me so much. And I can't remember what it said, but babe is looking it up. Yeah, but Amy gave it to you because she yeah, one of, of you. Yeah. Said, I've uh, everyone, everyone who is for, abo- I'm sorry. I've noticed that everyone who is for abortion has already been born. That was the sign. Right. Everyone who is for abortion has already been born. See? And so I had that that sign that it was a magnetic sign on my car. And see, that's probably why I had a sticky sticky. But I had an abortion sign and somebody stole it and pulled it off. I was so mad. That's the first time in my life I ever put a sticker on my car, a, a magnetic sign or anything. And somebody pulled it off and I was so mad. But babe, tell me, tell them, tell them about one of the times because you didn't. Our car has been scratched because one of our cars. Cause we have two cars. Well, we have more than two cars for, for business and stuff. But her car always gets scratched up, or the sign gets pulled off, or what other else has happened to the car? Um. Well, 
I know you're going to ask me this, and I, I'm sorry. I had a friend who had a, a, a sticker on the back of her car, and it said, abortion is mean. And every other time, I mean, people are scratching her car. Trying to get it off. Yeah, or just scratching her car to be mean about her. I know our car got scratched. I know. Yeah, our car has been scratched. Yeah. Lucky it was a 2000 or 1999. <laughs> <laughs> we poor. <laughs> well, we got each other. We live off our love. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got a love. Okay. All right. Uh, so, um, so abortion and contraception, the thing people don't understand about contraception is this. Contraception kills the baby that God sends before it even has a t- chance. You are killing souls from heaven. And nobody talks about that. Yeah, the, uh, the abortion, the um, birth control pill is an abortifacient. And what happens is the, um, the sperm and the egg, they fertilize. But then the the mother's womb becomes a um, oh what do I call it a hazardous a hazardous environment. Mm-hmm. And so there's no the lining is really thin, and so every month you think you're having a period, but well, likely every month you're having an abortion because the baby can't implant. Right. Implantation does not make um, it not abortion. Fertilization is a is a baby, and so anything you do to keep it from implanting is an abortion. Yeah. And what made, what drove it home to me is I was listening to Catholic Answers Live or something. But you know what? I'm t- Catholic Answers Live took me to the next level of my faith after I came from Crisil. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, they kind of happy clappy and I had to let them go a little bit. But like I said on the podcast the other day, I forgot what show it was. <laughs> I'm not good like that. Threefold. <laughs> One, two, two. <laughs> but look, really, when you go to Crisio, man, the program is on point. It's on the Catholic faith. Everything, the talks, the people talks, the, the all the information, the retreat itself is on point. It's the people, just like in the church, that mess stuff up sometimes. But the good thing about Crisio is you can't change stuff. It's hard to change stuff. And so they try to sometime, but then people will go, hey, man, you can't change that. <laughs> you know, but um, it's important that what happens is contra- well, my point is contraception. It kills the baby before the baby has a chance. God sends you souls. And so when you take contraception, you kill those souls in the womb or before the womb, whatever, before they even have a chance to 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 get to the egg and to get in the sperm or whatever to get done. You know, it depends on what kind of type of contraception you contraception you use. And that's why contraception is bad because once a man look, okay, I'm gonna bring it down to you, oh, brother. You know how we do. Once a man get the kids out. Once a man knows you're taking contraception or a man or whatever. A man is like, hey, it's free will. I can do whatever I want. He uses he uses the woman as a thing, as a utensil. Right, you and become a sex object for real. You become a sex object for real. Because the whole cause of marriage is for men and women to become one flesh, to, to have a child. Marriage is for the procreation and education of children. The union in itself, like I said in the podcast earlier, is is you know is 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 like a distant distant third. And some of the theologi- some of the theologians would would get on my butt and probably say it's not that far. But really, the union of the man and woman is not the main purpose of marriage. So anyway, let's move it on. In your opinion, Bay. Does the Catholic Church hate same-sex attracted men and women? Of course not. Of course not. Break it down to them, girl. <laughs> you know, it just it just it makes me very angry when I hear people say, um, you know, well, last night I was at a um, a pro-life film um, thing, mm-hmm. and one of the ladies on the panel, she was, I used to be Catholic, and I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make people mad, but I used to be Catholic. 
Be careful, them people. Right. Because <laughs> they, they think they're saying things they know and they don't know. Which don't is know. Catholic. But anyway, bless her heart. She said, you Catholics need to stop being so... Um, so judgmental when it comes to the homosexuals. And I just... I she just, actually said that? And Eric didn't say anything? She said it. We were all there together. Well, it was a, it was a panel discussion. Oh, she was in the audience. No, she was a panelist. Don't we vet anybody anymore? Yeah, we knew she wasn't Catholic. It's a pro-life film festival. It's not a Catholic pro-life film festival. Whatever. Okay. It's a film, it's a film thing. Okay. We're learning about... Um, at St. John's Church, yeah. Catholic Church. Yeah, but you know what? At the end, mm-hmm. when we all prayed the Hail Mary, mm-hmm. you know what she did? Mm-mm. She made the sign of the cross and prayed the Hail Mary like she's supposed to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, tell your story, babe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so I got so angry. I just, I just started praying, "Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us in the whole world," because this woman does not know what she's talking about. Mm-hmm. And uh, Charlie walked me out to my car. And I told him what makes me mad about that and all this other stuff. And he was like, you're right. You're right. I mean, we are, well, you know what? And, and truth be told, if I see a homosexual, I try and get near them, even trying to talk to them. Because he may not be a homosexual, number one. Right. Number two, I don't want him talking to my kids. You know, and you gotta, I mean, the church is welcoming. And we don't put anybody out because of anything, because we're all sinners. Plus, plus, babe, you can't, people kill me. You can't, okay, everybody's welcome to the Catholic Church, but if you are married to a woman and a man and you a dude, you can't come into the Catholic, you can't come into the, and you like fornicating on your wife, having sex with another woman, you can't come into the Catholic Church and thinking everybody's going to be like, oh yeah, woohoo. Ooh, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Come on in here. We're going to be the same way. You can't come in there screwing around your wife and thinking everybody's going to be welcoming you. You can't come into the Catholic Church or and, and just do what you want to do. God is going to change you. You ain't going to change him. Amen. You, you, and that's why we talk about, that's why homosexuals, so-called same-sex attracted people, you are welcome to the Catholic faith, just like any other sinner. But you can't come in there trying to sit with all the men. You can't come in there and sit in the pew and sit next to some dude and try to hit on him in the church or when he's at the, we down at the lunch eating. We have donuts. We eating donuts. We having donuts at the mass. Right, we having donuts at the mass. And you down there trying to hit on all the dudes. You can't come in there like that. And we're not going to accept it. But if you're trying to be obedient to God, we are down with that, dude. Oh, trying to figure out what God is saying. Right, trying to figure out what your purpose in his life is about. We down with that. But we ain't down with you. You know, you 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 have an abortion. Nobody's going to be like, oh, we're so glad you had an abortion today if you're a woman. No, we ain't. No. Man, please. But if you had had an abortion, um, the best place is to come to the Catholic Church. Of course. And talk to a priest. Amen. And get connected with the good uh, pro-life committee and go to uh rachel's vineyard yes rachel's vineyard retreats right the thing about it is man the catholic faith has it all dude two thousand years and 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 the problem with people is they think they know more than the catholic faith does you think you know more than the catholic church and the people in the cat and the the, the priests the bishops and the popes in the catholic church i'm talking about the ones that's doing it right now <laughs> i ain't talking about them crazy ones Okay, how can men? <laughs> here's a good one. How can men gain back the respect of women and society? Well, that's tough because um, you know the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world, which you know that's women raising children. Um, for men to command their place back outside of us having a nuclear war or an EMP attack. Mm. Um, I think he'll have to go to mass frequently, Mm -hmm. receive the sacraments often, get with a good spiritual director, go to work, save his money, build a home and pray for a good woman and, and treat her as one. Find a virtuous wife and live a virtuous life and bring beautiful children to the world and, and raise them that way. 
outside of and take on the headship of his home. Yes, take on the headship of the now, home. Now, babe, give your opinion on that. Cause man, I'm just, I'm just gonna be I'm gonna be completely honest. I mean, I thought I was doing a good job when we first got married because I wasn't a Catholic or nothing. I wasn't about nothing. I didn't. I thought, you know, but explain because a lot of women don't really understand and men understand what this means. So I've told my perspective a lot in these first four shows in the first four shows. But I want one of the reasons why I want you on here with me sometimes is that I want to get the woman's perspective of a woman that understands what God is really asking and that to understand that God's not really trying to demean or put you down. God is to understand what women's role really is. So when you, when I say head of the home, spiritual head of the home and all that's in that, what is your, what do you, what do you see? How did, you know, how did you bring me along? Well, I'm not exactly sure how I, I, I brought you along. I was the Catholic and I attended mass very occasionally and you would go with me. Um, but once you, you had a conversion experience and that was really tough for me because I was so accustomed to being the spiritual leader of the family. The one going to mass, the one doing this, the one doing that. The one that's trying to get you to go with me to different church functions. And, you know, I kind of, you know, I got married and I assumed my husband would... Um, participate in a lot more of our activities in the church, but no, he didn't. He wouldn't. Um, so I was basically a single mom all over again mm-hmm. in the church. Um, but then once you made your, you had your conversion experience, it was really hard for me to not, for instance, um, like you're more motivated to go to mass than I. You're more motivated to do things in church than me. I mean, I thought I was motivated, but I really wasn't motivated. Mm -hmm. You got motivated. And I was like, oh, man. You know, so, but I had to, you know, if your husband's not following Christ and living as Christ and doing as Christ asked, you can't, you can't follow him. But you were. And so I had to, a lot of times, just kind of sit back and think in my brain, okay, Mary, Kathleen, this is what you prayed for. He is right. So you can't be jumping up and saying you're not doing this, you're not doing that. You just have to keep your mouth shut because he's speaking the truth. It's a good thing. So just go along. So do me a favor. Now, you might not want to tell this story, but tell the story about how you were having sex with dude. (laughs) And then you started seeing the real deal. And then you pray, you went celibate for two years and prayed for a husband. Tell him that story. Come on now. Come on. They need it. You know, I hadn't thought about that story in particular. I almost don't even remember. I mean, I was, I was with my daughter's father. Mm-hmm. And um, it was, I mean, it was beyond dysfunctional. I mean, we were at a point where we were arguing and fighting and, um, you know, I mean, it just it was just a bizarre, dysfunctional way of living. And then how we were was we shack up. And then he- uh, that's living together <laughs> outside of marriage. <laughs> and then, you know, we'd have this big blow up and then he'd leave and I'd be happy. And then, um, you know, not nah, we'd be away from each other. And then. um he would pretend like he wanted to see the daughter again. So then I would, okay, you can see her. And can you bring her over? And then each time he's like, oh, you look nice. You look this. And I'm like, tell my mind, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Yeah. And then he'd wear me down. Mm. Even if, it t- I mean, he's a very patient person. I mean, sometimes it took six months. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But anyway, and then, you know, he'd be back in my house and backing in and back in my head and things getting all... You know, and I knew, you know, I was like, at the last time, I was like, Lord, and we, we were going to premarital counseling. And um, one, of the, one, of the, one of the other things that helped in my conversion, even though it's, it's, a, it's a strange story, uh, he and I were having, um, we we're having a fight. And he gives his side, I give my side. And both of us, you know, we're pretty agreeable, you know, on what was going on. And I asked the priest, um, what should we do? And he says to make love. 
Mm. Now that, I mean, I knew the church said not to do it. I didn't understand why I shouldn't do it, even though I was there doing it in premarital counseling. Right. <laughs> I, I wasn't even sure if it was a sin, especially because of some of the advice I'd gotten in previous confessions with even other priests. Um, so um, I'm, I'm kind of losing my train of thought. Well, kind of like we're going to like, how can men get back to respect of women in society? Well, they could be virtuous. They could, you know, um, do more than um, they could. They they could be virtuous. It doesn't help that we show cleavage and then get mad when you look at it. Um, but they go to mass, frequent the, the sacraments, um, frequent the sacraments, be responsible, volunteer, go to work, build a home, look for a virtuous wife. And, and provide a good and safe, stable home for her and your family. Okay, so that's, and that's another thing that people don't understand is that, you know, that's why we're the protectors. So you're going, you're with somebody and they're, and, and the dude is living with you and he's having sex with you and he's just not really understanding what he's doing is just messing up your soul so much. And that's another thing that that we have to understand as men that we just can't keep, you know, we are responsible for the for the for the women that we destroy. And it's really not a you know, it's really not a lot of times it's not our, our fault. We don't understand, but we also have to seek the the truth and the answers to what we're doing. And and so that's how we can get respect back with women. Women ain't gonna listen to you. If all you doing is trying to use them and then you get mad, you can mess around, but she can't go mess around. And it makes no sense. And so that's why right now men have no respect in society. You know, we really don't. Women, they nag, they, the curse of Eve on us all the time, nagging us, trying to control us. We get mad, don't listen, but we ain't doing our job. So that's why they feel that they got to do more and do take on more on their job. So um, that is kind of where that's, and we're going to end on that part right there. Cause I could go on forever talking about that. But anyway, babe. So the last two, what is the most effective thing in your daily life that you do to help keep you reaching towards holiness with God and out of trouble and on the right track? Example, devotion, prayer, sacramentals, those kind of things. Well, um, uh, uh, um, one thing that helps me is praying the rosary every day. And now I'm praying the rosary twice a day because um, Amen. I, pray, I pray the rosary with the kids on the way to school. But then I, I, I pray the flame of love rosary, which um, adds extra prayers um, to the rosary. And the flame of love is um, a grace that has been given to the Blessed Mother and um, and those who pray the um, the rosary, it blinds Satan, believe it or not. But that's a different podcast for a different time. Okay. And so, what? Okay, this is this is good. What is the funniest, worst, or best experience you ever had when trying to evangelize someone? Woohoo! Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I I personally don't specifically target look at massage and try and evangelize anyone specifically. I mean, in fact, I thought I was trying to evangelize you when we first got married, but me getting mad because you won't go to mass. You was getting mad at me? Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that's that's messed up, dude. I'm pregnant having kids. You're not going to even go to church with me. I mean... Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But then we went to to this um, black... Catholic marriage retreat, and then you told the group you only became Catholic because I was Catholic, and I was so spitting mad. But that's the truth. Why not? It's the truth. But you don't believe. Uh, you just go through the motions. Look, okay, okay, hold up. You gotta understand this about men. We will do anything to get the gift. That's what we do, whether it's right or wrong. Women gotta understand that. If our women want us to go to, to be Catholic so that we can have peace in our home and, you know, we can make love we're supposed to and we don't get mad, get restrictions, <laughs> we, we go, that's what we're going to do. So, so how are you going to get mad at me for being Catholic? You should be glad. Well, you, but you weren't Catholic yet. 
You hadn't changed. I mean, you had always gone to mass with me occasionally, so you're still going to mass occasionally. So it wasn't a difference. But once you went to Crisil and then you really became Catholic, it's like, oh. There you oh. go. That's what you get. Oh. That's what you get messing okay. with me. Uh, St. Paul moment. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So what about when, you know, like, like people come to ask you for money and you be trying to give them a prayer card? <laughs> so, I mean, that's funny to me. Well, no, well, this is what I do. They come up to me, ask me for money. Sometimes it depends on my mood. I'll ask them their story because everybody's got a story. Right. Lately, I haven't been feeling hearing people's stories. But anyway, um, and so I give, them a, I give them a rosary. I give them a path on how to pray the rosary. I encourage them to start out with praying one Hail Mary a day. One Hail Mary a day, and I give them the money. And, you know, no one, knock on wood, has rejected it. No one has said, what's wrong with you? Um, people have looked at it and looked at the car. I mean, with real curiosity, real curiosity. Like, yeah, what the heck is this? Well, I mean, but they're, they got the at least they're curious. They're not putting it in the trash. I mean, maybe later on they will, but they touch the beads. All the groceries I pass out have been blessed. So, you know, I don't, I mean, the Holy, the Holy Ghost is working. I know. And, um, oh, and I give them a, a dollar or two. Oh, that don't count. I'm just playing. All right, everybody. That is the last of the questions in the interview with my wifey, wifey. Thank you for coming again, babe. And uh, make sure you listen to the show, the rest of the show. (laughs) And God bless you, everybody. All right. Bye. All right, all right. I hope you enjoyed that. So share this podcast again with someone needing help in their marriage or relationship. Rate this podcast if listening on iTunes. Subscribe to this podcast if listening on CatholicAlpha.com to get new episodes in your email today. Again, I hope you enjoyed that interview with my beloved wife. I had fun doing it. She had fun doing it and hopefully gave you some insight into her and I and our marriage and, and, and how we're growing together and on the same page so that we can lead our children and our family. Um, so in conclusion, as we do always do, we end with a quote from Pope Benedict the 16th quote, society offers you comfort. But you weren't made for comfort. You were made for greatness. So go forth, Christian soldier. The spiritual fight is up on you. Fast. Pray. And prepare for battle. Thank you, Christian soldier, for listening in today. Remember, Catholic Alpha Radical is designed to repair, ignite, and once again spark the fire back into your marriage or relationship. So, what's your next action step? One, share this podcast with someone needing help in their marriage or relationship. Two, rate this podcast if listening on iTunes. Three, subscribe to this podcast if listening on CatholicAlpha.com to get new episodes in your email now.